to the Congress of the United States, pursuant to the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, 50 U.S.C. 1701, IEEPA, I hereby report that I have issued an executive order, the order, that takes additional steps with respect to the national emergency declared in Executive Order 12957 of March 15, 1995. In Executive Order 12957, the President found that the actions and policies of the government of Iran threatened the national security, foreign policy, and economy of the United States. To deal with that threat, the President in Executive Order 12957 declared a national emergency and imposed prohibitions on certain transactions with respect to the development of Iranian petroleum resources. To further respond to that threat, Executive Order 12959 of May 6, 1995 imposed comprehensive trade and financial sanctions on Iran. To impose sanctions on officials of the government of Iran and other persons acting on behalf of the government of Iran determined to be responsible for or complicit in the certain serious human rights abuses. Executive Order 13590 on November 20, 2011 to authorize the Secretary of the State to impose sanctions on persons providing certain goods, services, technology, information, or support that contribute either to Iran's development of petroleum resources or to Iran's production of petrochemicals and to authorize the Secretary of the Treasury to implement some of those sanctions. I have determined that additional sanctions are warranted particularly in light of the deceptive practices of the Central Bank of Iran and other Iranian banks to conceal transactions of sanctioned parties, the deficiencies in Iran's anti-money laundering regime, and the weakness in its implementation and continuing an unacceptable risk posed to the international financial system by Iran's activities. One, two, three, four, no sanctions, no war. Shouts heard from around the White House condemning a possible U.S. military conflict with Iran. My family is from Iraq. We've already seen what's happened. The United States has tried to get the people of Iran and Iraq to kill each other for the last 30 years. And we have no interest in seeing mothers lose their families and kids lose their parents. The Iranian people um, do not want their country to be invaded. They don't want any assassinations against their people. They're, they don't want... Uh, they don't want to suffer for any, any aggression by the United States. Dozens of protesters have assembled in front of the White House to protest U.S. military action overseas, particularly a potential conflict with Iran. This National Day of Action is being organized in 60 cities across the country as they try to appeal to the Obama administration that another war is not in the interests of anyone, including Americans. Many fear an Israeli attack on Iran could result in dire consequences, including escalated war in the Middle Middle East and Northern Africa. Others discuss the cause and effect of war that contributed to the U.S.'s economic breakdown and the struggle to regain its footing. No sanctions, no war! Five, six, seven, eight! American people are fed up with these wars. It has bankrupted this country. We can't uh, afford education. We can't afford social security. We can't afford anything in this country because we have bankrupted this country with war after war after war after war. Others criticize the U.S. government's alliance with Israel, which is leading the charge for a possible attack on Iran. The U.S. has not committed future involvement behind Israel, but has asserted its alliance. Before we even talk about the relationship with Israel, who or, or what is this group? It's the People's Mujahideen of Iran. They have been active as a terrorist group um, going back to the 1970s. In the 1970s, they killed six Americans, three military officers, three civilians. The U.S. So the U.S. has had them on their radar for years. And in the 90s, they finally put them on the terrorist list, where they remain in spite of a lot of lobbying to get off it. They have been the biggest thorn in the side of the Iranian regime for years. Now, why would they assist Israel and how does this relationship work? Well, I think the key thing is both of them have have a motive in this. I mean, for Israel, it's trying to stop a nuclear program and it's trying to use assassination as a tool. This is something that Israel has done in the past. It is not something that is unfamiliar to them. For the people's Mujahideen, according to the U.S. officials, what we're seeing here is an opportunity for them to combine with Israel's biggest external enemy 
and attack with impunity. Fabrications for many of our viewers and people who will be watching us, when, you, when they say, when they uh, hear the word fabrication, they would say, why would a TV channel, uh, a leading TV channel, mainstream uh, Arab media, fabricate news about Syria? Okay. And actually more than one, when you see five, six or seven uh, news outlets doing the same coverage, how would you explain that if they're fabrications as you call them? Okay, well it's quite clear that um, in, the, in the West and in certain con uh, Arab countries that the media is inseparable from uh, the state, the government. So for example, it's well known that the BBC is funded by the British state, Al Jazeera is funded by the Qatari state. So in effect it's very uh, naive actually to think that these news organizations will uh, report in a way that contradicts the foreign policy of their country. So we know very well that uh, Qatar has been calling for foreign intervention in Syria very openly. And very active in it, actually. They has been very active, just as they did in Libya. I mean, what I'm talking about now applies exactly to Libya also. Uh, Britain, uh, the NATO countries have also been pushing for um, intervention inside Syria. So it is actually the role of the, the media of these countries uh, to uh, p provide a narrative that supports um, intervention inside Syria. So really, it's, it's, uh, it is naive to think that these organizations are independent uh, and that they have, they, they have the ability to be objective. They are not independent and they have to uh, serve the foreign policy interests. So based on what... <laughs> Thousands of Syrians waving Russian flags cheered Russia's foreign minister as he arrived in Damascus Tuesday for talks with President Bashar Assad. Lavrov began the talks by saying Moscow wants the Arab people to live in peace and that the Syrian leader is aware of his responsibility. Lavrov's visit comes days after Syrian allies Russia and China vetoed a Western and Arab-backed resolution at the United Nations that would have condemned the Assad regime's crackdown on dissent and called on him to transfer some of his power to his deputy. The Syrian government had rejected the Arab plan as intervention in Syria's internal affairs. Regime forces, meanwhile, stepped up an assault on the flashpoint city of Homs using tanks and machine guns in a push to recover rebel-held district. We are pursuing a political path uh, in an attempt to resolve uh, with our international partners um, the situation in Syria, or rather to, to help the process move towards a peaceful political transition, democratic transition in Syria, working with friends of Syria uh, all around the globe. Uh, we believe that um, political solution is uh, the right way to go. Now, we never rule anything out in a situation like this, but we are pursuing a path that includes isolating and pressuring the Assad regime so that it stops its heinous uh, slaughtering of its own people. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, February 10th, 2012, and I'm Darko. Check out ggnonline.com, it's my website, and ddarko2012. Uh, just for my listeners, I just got slapped with my second strike, so I'm a bad, bad, bad slave. And um, over that um, part three of that Madonna Super Bowl video. So the last one that I got the strike for was over... Um, cyborgs it was a cyborg video and it was one of the best ones i think ever made probably the most important ones too uh talking about merging humans with machines that got pulled so those are probably one of the uh two best video sets of videos i've made and uh they're gone now so my only beef is that there's going to be you're going to see other videos of the of uh of the super bowl but they're not going to be pulled but anyways syria cia mi6 intel ops and sabotage in order to facilitate the action of liberative forces, a special effort should be made to eliminate certain key individuals to be accomplished early in the course of the uprising and intervention. It says here, uh, once a political decision has been reached, proceed with internal disturbances in Syria, the CIA prepared and uh, SIS uh, MI6 will attempt to mount minor sabotage and coup uh, incidences within Syria working through contacts with individuals. Incidences should not be concentrated in Damascus. 
It says here, further, a quote, necessary degree of fear, frontier incidents, and staged border clashes would provide a pretext for intervention. The CIA and MI6 should use capabilities in both psychological and action fields to augment tension. This is from the joint U.S.-U.K. leaked intelligence document, London, Washington, 1957. So... February 10th, 2012, UK denies sending special forces to Syria. Then the US should mull arming Syrian opposition, says McCain. Then we have this, US not considering arming uh, Syrian opposition. Then we have this, U.S. and allies considering plans for military aid to Syrian rebels. So just like the concept of doublespeak from uh, 1984, the very concept of objective truth is fading out of the world. Lies will pass into history. That's from him. Foreign troops in Syria back Homs, rebels, Damascus, and Moscow at odds. And it goes on and says that uh, their tactical advisors and manage rebel communication lines and relay their request for arms, ammo, and fighters, mostly uh, based in Turkey. That's right. And they said they're not engaging directly. Independent reports contradicts Western portray or portrait of Syria. Arab League report shows that Syria has been mischaracterized. The government has facilitated meetings with all parties, said no restrictions were placed on the movement of the mission and its ability to interview Syrian citizens. It also went on said the mission noted that many parties falsely reported that explosions or violence had occurred in several locations. They also noted that the media exaggerated the nature of the incidences and number of persons killed in incidences and protests in certain towns. Lebanon security officials say suspicious cargo containing huge amounts of U.S. dollars, guns, special passports, credit cards have been seized upon arrival in the Lebanese capital of Beirut uh, from the U.S. and Brazil. It says here that the uh, Lebanese defense minister had confirmed members of al-Qaeda terrorist group fighting against the government of Syrian President Assad have entered Syria through Lebanon. We have pro and anti-Assad forces clash in Lebanon. According to an eyewitness, after uh, Friday's prayer, anti-Assad protesters fired at least two rocket-propelled grenades, uh, wounding at least two people. Next up, we have U.S. closes Syria embassy and pulls out their staff. Obama says U.S. working in lockstep with Israel and Iran. Obama said uh, on Sunday he sought to reassure Americans over uh, the threat posed by Iran, saying that the United States was working in lockstep with Israel to bring Tehran to heal over its suspected nuclear program. He said the Islamic Republic was, quote, feeling the pinch of tougher sanctions. Then we have next, students. Uh, Israeli government has launched a new program to promote the Israeli agenda on Facebook and Internet chat rooms. The students are paid to spread Israeli propaganda. That's right. Go in there and check that out. Links will be posted. IAEA to issue harsher Iran reports. Set stage for the war. Then we have Israel warns U.S. Jews Iran could strike here at any moment. Bold Alligator, a massive 11-nation military drill aimed at fending off Iran in the Strait of Hormuz, although I don't know how many soldiers they're going to actually have to do this or if they're actually going to invade by land. They're going to try to do stuff like this. Iran turns to bartering for food as sanctions cripple imports and try to let them uh, basically crumble within uh, within inside the country internally. Then we have Iran launches new military exercises of their own, ground military exercises on Saturday. Russia to create their own shield against NATO. They've also set to build the world's most powerful laser station. Maybe it's directed energy. So Obama is uh, getting uh, cushy-cushy with Turkey now, and all of a sudden the Turks seek world action. Something must be done in Syria. Then in Tunisia, um, after they what had their little regime change, to withdraw recognition of Syria government. Egypt then defies U.S. by setting trial for 19 Americans on criminal charges for what? Um, basically charged criminal investigation to the foreign financing of nonprofit groups. So it's outside interest uh, trying to get in there and get a regime change. BBC, because it always looks bad when you just, uh, you know, pull up the ships and start dropping bombs and all that stuff. It's too messy, that, that the business of killing people and getting what you want. BBC reveals after the facts how British special forces supervise and spearheaded Libya rebels to victory. Of course, you had al-Qaeda in there uh, working. So British efforts to topple Gaddafi were not limited to just airstrikes on the ground and on the quiet. Special Forces soldiers were blending in with the rebels. The first and most basic task of the advisory team was to get the various bands of Libyan fighters roaring around in armed pickup trucks under some sort of central coordination. Look at this. Somali's militant group Al-Shabaab joins Al-Qaeda. And of course, this is what? This is according to Al-Qaeda. Now, reading a comment down here, the title should be USA, EU, Saudi Arabia, Israel have asked Al-Shabaab to join Al-Qaeda. 
saying the group might actually be used in Yemen or Syria. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.